Hello, and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast, where you can learn powerful techniques to change the way you feel. I am your host, Dr. Rhonda Borowski, and joining me here in the Murrieta studio is Dr. David Burns. Dr. Burns is a pioneer in the development of cognitive behavioral therapy and the creator of the new Teen Therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 30 languages. His latest book, Feeling Great, contains powerful new techniques that make rapid recovery possible for many people struggling with depression and anxiety. Dr. Burns is currently an emeritus adjunct professor of clinical psychiatry at Stanford University School of Medicine. Hello. Rhonda. Hello, David, and welcome <laughs> everyone to episode 312. Welcome to everyone to our listeners around the country and across the world, because we do have people all over the world. And I just reinstated the whole the hello, Rhonda, after having terminated it last week. It is now back by popular demand. I know, because and, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, there were people that said there were a few people in the survey that said they didn't like the hello, Rhonda, but there were more people that said they did like it. And you were saying that uh, people when you on you, you came back from your world travels and that people often use that when they said hello to you. Right. They say it to me in Poland. And like I said, whenever I'm in part of a team community event, people say that to me. Oh, I love hello, Rhonda. They actually want to have the opportunity to say it themselves to me. <laughs> okay. So we'll, we'll stick with uh, our, our, our weirdness for a while longer. <laughs> yeah. So David, um, can you tell people what we're going to do today? Yes, we're we're trying to respond to your fantastic uh, suggestions on the s survey that we went over in part last week. And one of the things a couple people said, I'd like more examples of how, how you would use the five secrets of effective communication if you were treating a patient with borderline personality disorder or, or a patient who's who's very angry and, you know, cr critical of the therapist, and that others uh, said that they wanted more uh, training, well, on, on specific therapy techniques, such as the five secrets and, and other techniques. And so I thought, well, it'd be really easy for you and me, uh, Rhonda, to demonstrate how and how, how we'd use the five secrets in response to very hostile comments from uh, an angry patient or from uh, uh, an angry uh, family member and and not only illustrating how to use the five secrets but some specific training techniques that you can try whether you're a, th a shrink or or a general citizen type if you'd like to improve your uh, expertise with the five secrets and i would say that uh, the five secrets is a pretty fantastic and majestic thing it's it's like a complex musical instrument and its effectiveness will depend entirely on 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 how committed you are to it how how much practice you've done where, where your heart is and and how you implement it. it it's not a formula it's it's not something that's going to come easily for many different kinds of reasons and but if if you'd like to improve your your skills at connecting with patients who who seem angry with you uh or or with family members uh that that that's good i i i recently made a mistake uh responding to to someone in the group a couple of weeks ago and she asked a seemingly innocent question and I found myself responding to her in an irritable way, mm. kind of a put down way, which was what she feared. And she mentioned it in the critical feedback and Jill mentioned it to me. And I, I saw that in myself and, and I was really pretty, uh, pretty shocked. And I couldn't understand why, because I, I think the world of this person and why I'd been so kind of crabby and irritable in responding to her her question i was ashamed uh, but th then you know i emailed her and we talked it over and it had the most fantastic effect of making our, our our relationship way deeper and way more meaningful and it was just a transformative experience for her 
but uh, I think for me to be humble and to acknowledge that I was didn't like the way I'd responded to her, I hadn't didn't quite understand it, and and that you know acknowledging her feeling, just using the five secrets, and 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 what a fantastic experience it was. Not only did my shame disappear, but I, I just am flooded with with joy and happiness, and to to have a new understanding, and I kind of see what 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 happened, uh, and uh, and and just the fantastic beautiful things that can happen when you learn when you use the five secrets it's mm -hmm. it's it's pretty pretty amazing but let, let's see if we can demonstrate it and sh shut up of talking about it and actually do it okay let me read you no know, in the survey people said that they didn't like long endorsements so let me just read a really brief one that was so poignant about the episode 307 that we did uh, on meet the founders of the bad group and steve wrote something just so heartfelt about that podcast episode he wrote amen well said thank you for your work it has meant more to me and my family than i can express well thank you and that was steve mm -hmm. yeah well thank you steve what a beautiful beautiful statement and thank you for the three fantastic people from the bad group which is black african descendants these are black team cbt therapists and i'm just so proud uh, that that you've uh, founded this group and that you agreed to be on our podcast and i, I just think what you you're all very very awesome and i lo love and respect you all so much great yes that was a great podcast okay so do you want me to tell you something that a patient said to me and then you do the five secrets or things that we've made up that patients have said yeah, yeah yes and and i'll do the five secrets unless it's really tough and then i'll have you do the five secrets okay let's list a bunch of a bunch of things here okay. so what, what we're going to do here we're, we're going to make a, a list of, of killer difficult statements that a patient might make to a therapist and then we'll we'll practice them and okay. uh, if we don't get an a we'll do role reversals and show you how you can learn how, how you yeah. can use these things if you're a therapist and then we'll do what family members might say so hopefully yeah. there will be something specific and important for you whether you're a therapist or a general citizen or both yeah and that example you gave about the tuesday group i mean we're that you just talked about we're all human yeah and we, and we make mistakes and you yeah. talk all it took me a long time to get this what you said that we learn best from our failures yeah and when you first told me that i was arguing against you uh, in my head and uh, maybe on the, into your face i was like no that's not true but yeah um it, you know you just gave a great example of how we're human we make mistakes but it's not that we make mistakes that's the problem it's it's when we're not we don't have the tools to repair them or the, the willingness. Or the willingness, yeah. Because sometimes exactly. they require the death of the self, the death of the ego, and have to look at something about yourself that's not very attractive. Right, right. exactly. Uh, okay, so here, here's one I thought of when you were just talking. Well, let's, let's give our list first. Yeah, so here's then, one. Then, yeah, uh, that's not my child's name. You're not listening to me. Okay, I'm going to add that to the list. Yeah, add that to the list. Uh, that, that's... Not my my child's name. You're not not listening to me. That 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 that's a shocker. Do you want to hear a good professional response? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> my dear, the truth is much worse than what you think because I don't even remember your name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's it's a stupid David dark no. humor. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, sure. That's a tough. And here's another one. You don't care about me. Mm -hmm. um, and you, let's take turns reading okay. these and then we'll zero in on them. I'm not getting any better. Mm -hmm. You charge too much money. Mm -hmm. You started our session late. All you care about is your stupid techniques. If you ask me to do homework one more time, I'm going to commit suicide. <laughs> um, I was so anxious. 
I was so anxious about meeting you that last night I masturbated to your image. Yeah, I hear that all the time. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We'll have to have censorship on, on, yes. on, on this one. Okay. Okay. Well, Chilby, so, you know, an under 21 listens to our podcast, so I think it's okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's, uh, which one do you want to start out with? And then after this, we'll, we'll, we'll do these. We'll show you how we did them. We'll show you how to do the, the practice. And then we'll do some, some uh, family type, type ones too. So which one do you want to start out with? Let's Rhonda? start out with kind of an easy one. That's not my child's name. You're not listening to me. Okay. Um, so let, uh, let, let me hear how you'll, you'll hand her, handle that one. Uh, you know, you know, Rhonda, that, that, that's not my, my child's name. You, you're, you're not listening to me. Oh my gosh. I'm so embarrassed. You know, you're right. That isn't your child's name. And I imagine you must be really irritated with me that I'm, I'm saying, I'm, I'm, you know, you've been talking about your child and, um, and then I addressed your child with the wrong name and. You might even be feeling kind of betrayed or even maybe a little bit lonely within our relationship. I am feeling really embarrassed and regretful that I missed that, that I, I called your child by a different name. And I'm wondering if you could tell me more about what it's been like for you to actually be in therapy with me when I, I you know, I addressed her by or him by the wrong name and, um, I actually am embarrassed to admit too, there are sometimes I do space out and maybe I did, I, it sounds like I absolutely spaced out when you were, you were addressing your child by their name and um, you are very important to me. I love working with you and I am going to make a huge, much more effort to pay attention. I wouldn't say that. Um, and you're important to me. And then you're important to me and I really care about you. And I will work really hard in the future not to make that same mistake because honestly, I make it all the time. My own children, I don't call them by their right, right names. Okay, great. Now, what grade do you give yourself? <laughs> well, I'd give myself a B for that because I really didn't know how to conclude it. And then I made that kind of hokey comment about I'll take, I'll, uh, I'll yep. yeah. So I kind of liked it, but I kind of didn't like it. Yeah, and and most of the time, if if you folks uh, who are listening try this, say have practice with your partner or someone in your fa family, then you give a letter grade, and then you say what, what did you like and what did, what did you dislike, and it doesn't hurt to have a list of the five secrets in front of you, mm -hmm. and I'll put one in the show notes too, uh, which we've done on many occasions mm -hmm. in, in in the past. So that that gives you something to kind of ha hang your your hat on. Okay, I'll tell you the one thing I really liked about what I said. Mm -hmm. I, I said you might be feeling lonely within our relationship. Mm -hmm. I, I, I did like that, but that was probably the best thing I said. Sure. Uh, you said betrayed and lonely, too. Mm -hmm. too. Uh, yeah. Well, you, 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 uh, you also did some pretty nice uh, I, I, I feel st statements. Uh, the, uh, you know, I'm uh i i'm i'm regretful i'm i i'm embarrassed uh, and i and i sometimes like to com combine that with with, with stroking uh like I, I i'm sad and kind of embarrassed particularly because i do like you so much and have so much respect for you and i'm mm. kind of feeling ashamed and beating up on myself for forgetting your your child's name as as well as your own <laughs> 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 no, this is David being loony, um, and um, and then uh, you, you might be feeling, uh, you know, some other feelings you could mention. You know, you know, angry or or hurt or yeah, I said irritated. Yeah, right. That that's good. Uh -huh. T ticked off at me, and uh, I thought it was all really nice until, as you point out, at the end, um, you tried to be real nice and promised. To yeah. change, right. and and I think that's typically not n not not helpful uh, at all. It right. it's kind of sounds like so someone who beats his wife would say that. Yeah, you know, I'll I'll, I'll stop beating you uh, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and to be perfectly honest, I'm sure I would make that mistake again. Yeah, so yeah. It's not something that I could promise. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. But to to to, I, I think the direction I might go at the end would would, would be. Uh, uh, I, I'm also a little concerned and, and wondering if, if may, maybe I've I've done other things that had have hurt your feelings or mm -hmm. felt made it seem like I wasn't caring about you or or paying attention to to, to you. Uh, can, can you can you can you tell me more about this and and what it's like for you and mm -hmm. how, how how you're feeling? T uh, tell me about the the especially the negative feelings, the hurt, the anger, the sadness, the you know any dis disappointment you might be be feeling. I love 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 that. Okay, why? Because you're taking this one incident and you're opening it up to a broader yeah. conversation. Right. And and there probably have been other times. Yeah. When I as a therapist have hurt my patient but I'm not trying to but um or not paid attention and and maybe this is a theme in their life in their and that if oh, we yeah. talk about it within our relationship it could help support them to improve other relationships. Yes, and in, in this case the failure is probably a a, a great success in disguise because mm -hmm. as you say it might well be that this person has a way of boring people or turning them off or getting people to let her down. Mm -hmm. And 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 so if if you give her the chance to vent about it and and are not defensive about it, the, you you could be the first person who who really listened and really gave her a chance to 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 vent. Um, and the problem with saying you're important to me and and I do care about you and I'll work hard at the end is a way of saying I don't want to hear any more about this. I'm, right. Let's make nice and yeah, you know, let's make nice. And it's kind of not believable. Yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. In that moment. Yeah. I care exactly. about you. Yeah. Kind of like a pat answer, like I'm pitying. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and by the way, uh, uh, for all you who are listening, Rhonda is now modeling the five secrets in a really nice way by not getting defensive and being open to my feedback, which makes me feel terrific. And oh. um, that that's that's real five secret stuff. Now, should we go on to another example or do a, a deliberate practice and do a, a second a second attempt? Well, it's up to you. What do you want to do? Well, I think if we're trying to model how to learn, mm -hmm. we, we should demonstrate that for people. And and what because you're saying you want more details of how to do therapy techniques or life techniques. And what deliberate practice means is, you know, R Rhonda, you got to be, and and you did some things beautifully, and some things uh, that could be improved. And then in deliberate practice, you get, then you get a chance to try it again and see if you can raise your grade. And if you have time, and we won't go all the way through it, but you can do it over and over until you get up to an A. And I've had some people who took 10 role reversals until they got up to an A. Mm. Uh, but it's, it's, it's really well, nice. That's dedication. Yeah, well, it doesn't take long. It takes about 10 minutes, particularly if it's something short. You just keep doing it over and over again until the person finally finally gets it. But could I talk to you for a minute, uh, uh, Rhonda? Sure. Yeah, I, I, I didn't like it because you got the name of my, my child wrong. You called, her, you called him Sarah, and his name is Jim. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, oh, you're absolutely right. I did not call your child by by this right name and um i can see how i'm absolutely in those moments not listening to you and not paying attention and i can really imagine that you're feeling um really betrayed by me and um irritated or even angry at me that i'm not catching something that's so important to you your child's name and that relationship is really important to you and i'm feeling really embarrassed and regretful particularly because I like you so much and I like the work that we're doing on your relationships and I know how important it is and I value that so much. And I'm, um, I'm feeling, yeah. So I'm a little concerned and I'm, I'm kind of wondering if not just this time I've missed the mark like that, but if there are other times that I've done something that have hurt your feelings or said something that hurt your feelings or missed the mark with you or given you the impression that I'm not paying attention to you. And I'm wondering if you can tell me if that's happened in other times in our relationship and tell me more about that. Because again, you know, you're really important to me. And I think this could be my failure could lead to 
um, greater understanding between the two of us. That's great. I'd give that an A. I wouldn't give it an A plus because it, it, it went way, it's way better and way better than it would it need to be. But I, at the end, I would say, uh, and I'm wondering if you can tell me more about how, how, how you've been feeling toward mm -hmm. me, and particularly the, the negative feelings that are sometimes hard to talk about. I, that's what I want to hear about okay. your anger, your hurt, and what, what, what it's been like for, for you. This is a little awkward, it's a little painful, but this could be incredibly important in d deepening our relationship. You know, honestly, it takes courage to say that, and I'm feeling kind of vulnerable and not courageous, but this practice is really helping. Yeah. That it would make it easier to say that. Yeah, it is hard because it involves the death of the ego, and uh, that, that's why it's easy for me to talk to you around about times when I screw up because you're so warm and I trust you, so it, somehow it's easy to let my ego die, uh, but it's hard for all of us, uh, for sure. Okay, so should I try one more time? If you like, I, but it, I mean, it was it was an A, so oh, okay. it's probably probably good enough. Why don't we go on to another example? Well, we can we can do another one if you like. Um, it's all good. You want to try it again? Okay, want to try one more time? Oh, okay, that last yeah, thing well, you said. <laughs> yeah. So the um, yeah yeah you you are you not listening to me, uh, d d doctor? You you that's not the name of my son. Oh my gosh, you're so right. I did not use your son's correct name and um i can i i absolutely was not listening and paying attention when you talked about him and i mean when you when you named him and i'm feeling really regretful and embarrassed about that and particularly because i like you so much and i know how important that relationship is to you and i have really been enjoying the the work that we've been doing on your relationships and um kind of beating myself right now for missing that and imagining that you're feeling betrayed by me and irritated or angry with me and um you know maybe I'm kind of a little loneliness I'm wondering if there's a little loneliness in your relationship with me that or it feeling as alien you know like alienated um I'm really concerned and wondering if I've while we've been working together, I've done things that have hurt you or given you the impression that I'm I'm not paying t attention to you at, at other times. And I'm wondering if you could tell me more about that, particularly I'm hoping that you could tell me the negative feelings that you might be having toward me, like feeling hurt by me or angry at me. And I'm I'm hopeful that if we can talk about those, it'll broaden, it'll deepen our relationship and and maybe we'll both learn something that will help us in the future, but especially, you know, supporting you in your journey in your therapeutic process. <laughs> okay. I didn't like the therapeutic process at the end. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. Well, right. Yeah. Anyway, I didn't yeah. notice that until you said it. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, yeah. that's kind of like putting her in her yeah. place. Well, yeah. Uh, and it's yeah. like cycle Bible. Is, yeah. Is that's always right. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that was, that, that was, that was excellent. I thought. Okay. Yeah. It's really helpful to do it more than once. Yeah, absolutely. Now, should we go to a personal one or another one of these juicy uh, therapy ones? Well, can we do the hardest one? Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to read it to you. Okay, ready? Well, tell me what it is. The last one I said about masturbating to your image. Oh, can we do that right. One? Yes, and, and since you have thought about how to respond to that one, and that probably came from a male, mm -hmm. so I'll, I'll be the patient, and you can be the therapist again, okay. so, since you're enjoying the process so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, and we're not trying to be unethical here, but sometimes these things do come up in, in therapy, and then how, how there's a chapter on this in my psychotherapy ebook, mm -hmm. Tools.Schools of, of Therapy. How, how do you respond uh, to to sexual type in, innuend, innuendos from patients. It's the most advanced area, I think, of uh, five secrets re responses. But, but doctor, I, I just want you to know I, I masturbated to your, your image last night. Oh, um, wow. So I have to admit that I'm kind of shocked and, and, um, I, I'm at a loss for words that you've said that to me, and um, 
this is not, and I'm uh, well, kind of embarrassed and wondering if that was one of the reasons you told me about this is because you want me to feel embarrassed. I'm also feeling a little angry and irritated and kind of wondering, you know, where to go next, especially because this is one of the first times we've met and um, I'm wondering if you're trying to involve, get, you know, do some kind of a power. <laughs> I wonder if you're trying to like, gain some power over me because it's super uncomfortable what you just said. And to be perfectly honest, I really didn't like it. And I'm feeling, kind of, like I said, angry and irritated and wondering, like, what the hell? I can't do give any like affirmations because I'm not feeling good enough about you to say anything positive about this experience, which I, I feel regret about. I'm sorry about that. So I don't know what more to say than what was the reason mm -hmm. for you to tell me that? Like, and how do you think that we're going to work together in the future? <laughs> I would give myself an F for that response. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> Well, that's courageous of you to to do something. Give yourself an an F there. Um, th is, this is a new patient. Can can you tell me what kind of patient this is so we can ha get a feel for? It might be some someone who's very naive or someone who is very hostile. You I'd know, say what, somebody like you. We had talked about that we were going to do a podcast of working with somebody with borderline personality disorder, and I would oh. guess that this person had borderline personality disorder. Or some. Um, uh, something like that, and and was hostile, like um, not really wanting to be in therapy and being um, ordered to be in therapy. By, or being, oh, I see. You know, like, the, like they're... This, this is someone who's court-ordered to be in therapy against their will? Yeah. Um, well, okay, that's not my area of expertise, but I, I'd be glad to take a shot at it. If, okay. If you, if, if you would. Uh, okay. Let me give it, it some thought. Yeah, go ahead. I wonder if it'll make noise if I type your response, because I want to write this down. Well, um, we are recording this as well, <laughs> yeah, I believe. That's right. <laughs> I can always listen to it again. Um, let's see. Um, uh, so go, go ahead and... And, and, oh, you know, I was so anxious and upset about having to come to therapy to see you today that I pulled a, a picture of, of you off the internet and I masturbated it to, to it last night. It, that really helped me relieve my anxiety. Yeah, I'm I'm feeling a little little awkward right now. I, I you're, you're 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 taking me by surprise, and uh, so I'm trying to figure out how, how to respond to, to that. Uh, um, I'm, I, I guess I have two different kinds of feelings, uh, about that. One, I think in a therapeutic relationship, you're, you know, entitled to, to say whatever you want and to, to share your thoughts and feelings and fantasies and, and, and problems. Um, but on the other hand, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm wondering if if you're feeling kind of you know angry or aggressive and and feeling like maybe you don't want to be in treatment and and maybe like you're you're kind of trying to shock me or or or, or push you away and um I actually don't believe in treating people against their will because you know I've never seen that 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 would be helpful to anybody and uh, even though you're court ordered, uh, if if you wanted me to work with you, you'd have to have something that we could work on together, something that you wanted help with. And and if there isn't anything that you want help with, may, maybe I'm not the right person for you. And there's no no shame in that at all. Can you can you tell me a little bit about how you're feeling right right now? Maybe you're feeling hurt or angry with me, or awkward, or a little little embarrassed. Um, I really want to kind of see what's going on and and see how you're feeling. This this could be very very important. Oh my gosh, that was really lovely. Okay, why? Well, that's that's Rolaid spells relief. But why, <laughs> why, why was it? 
um, because you didn't get into a power struggle, you didn't um, put them down like I did. Uh, I did both of those two things. And you were very open and accepting. I loved how you said in a therapeutic relationship, you can share whatever you want, feelings, fantasies, problems. And so there was a very strong level of acceptance to what you said. Yeah. And I think one of the uh, principles that's hard for people to understand is when you try to control the other person and say, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. And that's really upsetting me. That will probably force the person to keep doing it. Right. It has the opposite of the uh, desired effect. Right. Uh, and I think in a lot of graduate school programs, people are taught to set limits with your patients. And occasionally you do need to to set uh, l limits, but it's it's a tricky thing. And I would say much of the time when people are trying to set limits, it's it's not a wise di direction. Mm -hmm. but, it's, it's, but then they say, well, then am I supposed to be real permissive and encourage this romantic stuff? And but that's not the opposite, right? Of trying to con control control somebody. Um, uh, yeah. Well, I'm glad that 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 worked worked Could, would out. Would you would you say something like a therapeutic? I thought you were going in this direction. That the therapeutic relationship is very special, and it never includes, you know. You can do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The therapeutic. Yeah. You can say the therapeutic relationship is special and it, it never includes anything of a sexual or, or romantic nature. But that isn't, doesn't mean you can't talk about your thoughts and feelings and anything that crosses your mind. But b before we you know, go in that direction, I, I don't even know why you're here or what if, if you want help with something. I've just been feeling a little awkward, a little taken aback and. And, uh, you know, if, if there's something that you do want to be working on, I, you know, may, maybe we could, uh, you know, make something really cool happen f for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but uh, right now I'm just, you know, I need to, to hear a little bit more from you. Mm -hmm. uh, OK. Um, do you want to give it a try again? OK. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I uh, I was so anxious uh, b b before coming here uh, today for my first session that the judge ordered me to to get treatment. I got so anxious, I I found a picture of you on the internet and masturbated to it last night, and that was v very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could. Oh wow, yeah, I could imagine that would be helpful. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh gosh, that's really curious. I'm I'm really curious about that. And I'm also feeling a little awkward and uncomfortable and honestly a little shocked. And I'm trying to figure out how exactly to respond to you. I'm imagining that you must be feeling super anxious to to go through that and to share that with me and I just want to let you know that a therapeutic relationship is always a very specific and special relationship. And there's nothing ever of a sexual nature between a therapist and their patient. And there's, there's never any time when it would be okay for me to do anything exploitative or take advantage of you. And I have, a, I have, you know, I hold these kind of relationships to be very a relationship with my clients to be very sacred. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm wondering what your anxiety was about. And if you're feeling aggressive toward me, or if you don't want to actually be here, I know you're a court ordered and your probation officer sent you. And that's put us in a really weird kind of dynamic. And, you know, I don't, I know, you, you know, therapy doesn't work if, and I don't believe in treating people against their will. So, you know, if you don't want to work with me, that's really cool. And you don't have to be here and I'll let your probation officer know. It's just, it's not going to work. Um, and that's totally okay. And, you know, maybe there's somebody else that could work better with you or you would feel more um, comfortable working with. And I, I'm kind of curious, can you tell me how you're feeling right now or, you know, what, what, how, what's your reaction to the things that I'm saying? And um, is one, you know, is there something that you want to work on in therapy with me? Maybe we could, you know, make this therapeutic relationship very helpful for you, even if, it's starting off this kind of awkward way and you're being forced to be here as opposed to you volunteering, volunteering to be here. So 
Can you tell me more about what you're feeling and what you might hope to gain from being in therapy? If there is anything like that. I, I thought that was much, much, much better. Um, what, what grade did you give yourself? Well, I would go up from an F to a B. Yeah, that's right. Uh huh. I don't think it was an A. I don't think, I think the awkwardness of the topic is still um, making me uncomfortable. But I like the idea of looking under, like we talked about in a podcast when that we did with Heather Clegg and Brandon Vance about what's the music underneath what someone is saying. And I'm, and I liked how you said, um, I'm wondering if you're feeling aggressive. And that to me is the music underneath what he is saying. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that that was a, a nice step step forward. I, I I think you could say I'm I'm really f feeling awkward right right now, and I I've, I've hardly gotten to know you. And um, uh, you said you were anxious, and you masturbated to my image. And that made you feel a lot better. And maybe there's a way we could turn this uh, to to your advantage. Maybe something just happened between us has happened between you and other people too, and has created problems in your relationships with with, with people. Um, but uh, but I, I'd like to hear more how how you're feeling right right now. Are you feeling aggressive or hostile? Maybe you're wishing you weren't here. Maybe you're here against your will and don't want to be here. And, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, I have, I have a lot of respect for you and, and if there's something you want help with, I'd, I'd love to hear what that is and see how we might work together to, 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 to make a positive impact on your life, maybe change, change your life. But if you don't want to be here, I would totally respect that too, because I, I don't believe in treating people against their will, uh, because I've never once found that to be effective and i'm sure you can see that that too so can you tell me kind of a little bit more of, of what's going on with you and and also how you're feeling right at this moment in response to what i just sa said to you are you feeling anxious uh, relieved angry pissed off uncomfortable confused to, uh, I, I really want to hear what you have to say mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. Cool. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, you know, your response is so open. And like I said before, accepting without being confrontive. And in a way it is setting a limit. Um, like, you know, I'd love to make a positive impact on your life or maybe support you changing your life. But if that's not what you want, I really don't believe in working with people who who don't who are forced to be in therapy because as you can imagine it doesn't have any it's never successful if you're being forced to be here and you don't want to be here and i don't really want to um participate in a relationship where you're being exploited or forced to do something you don't want to do so i really want to hear what your response is to the things i've said so what are you feeling exactly right now and what it i want really really want to hear what your you know, in relationship, what, the, you know, what your response is to the things that I'm saying. And I'm, I'm kind of wondering if the relationship, you know, the things that you've said to me and how you related to me is, is a way that you related to other people. And maybe that's something we could work on if that's something that you want to work on. Um, so I could support you having, you know, relationships with people that, that you, you get benefit from. No, I'm, I'm floundering. I do. Well, I think you're floundering in a really good way. I think it's a that that, that that's a huge improvement. And um, uh, the uh, but I think the natural tendency to defend oneself is is very understandable. Mm. And um, uh, and 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 sometimes uh, can maybe go in 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 the wrong wrong direction. You remember mm -hmm. I told you the story about the the woman who was. Uh, kidnapped by a serial rapist killer yeah. mm -hmm. and how she she really treated him with respect right uh, and uh, i mean he had her at gunpoint and was planning to take her and beat her to death and you know rape her and beat her to death and and uh, 
and but but it goes against the natural inclination and and so you know there could be viewers who are saying Bur- burns is so screwed up on this thing and he doesn't know what he's talking about and I, I, that you you could be be absolutely right, mm-hmm. but I think that uh, kind of not not losing your cool, but sharing your feelings. I'm just kind of shocked and blown away right now. You got me there uh, on your opening salvo. Uh, I'm I'm a little little confused right now, but let let me say that what just happened could be very important. Uh, uh, and because I, I barely know you and. Uh, and and something just happened that you know just kind of blowing my mind, and uh, I, I don't know if you've thought about the impact on me, or if maybe you're feeling angry about being here, or or, or upset, or or awkward. Or, you know, it probably took a lot of courage to say what you just said too. Can you tell me more for, where you're at, and and if you want to be here, or if if you want to be here, we. Possibly we can find a way to work together that would be helpful to you and life changing. But if you don't want to be here, I, I'm totally cool with that too. And I, I would never dream of, you know, keeping you here against your will or treating you if there's nothing that, that you want help with. Can can you tell me more how you're feeling right now? How do you feel about what I what I just said? Yeah. So I think the difference between you and me is that when somebody said that to me, I felt really triggered and like agitated and you just seem so calm in response. Like, well, you might need to work on your own negative thoughts too yeah. on a daily mood log and, mm-hmm. and to get a, 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 over that. Because I think if you can be calm, but you don't have to be totally calm, but if you're anxious, you can say, I'm feeling really anxious, but you can, you know, say that without, if you're in a panic, then he's got you. Do you, yeah. you see what I mean? Exactly. Uh, particularly if he has predatory nature, and maybe that's mm-hmm. that's why he's he, he's there, and he wants to see if he can be a, a predator right right away. Mm-hmm. And if you meet him on a human level, it uh, it spoils his game. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I don't know if this is going to be any good for a podcast. At oh Wayne yeah, this Navy. is awesome. Okay. Oh yeah, um, let's do the fam- let's do a family one now. Okay, sure. Yeah, but uh, thanks for being brave and going in in that direction. No one yeah. can ever claim us for being overly meek on the Feeling Good podcast. <laughs> well, thank you for the support <laughs> and help. And you're right. Per, you know, I it sounds like I have to do some personal work about um, my own anxiety in response to stuff like that. Yeah, so. for sure. Yeah. Now, the, you you gave a couple personal family things uh, uh, before we started the podcast. One was stop nagging me, and uh, and then I don't know if that's husband or what. And then from ch- kids, you know, you're giving me too much advice, and I, I don't want any advice. <laughs> Those are both <laughs> children. Those are both okay, from kids. Children. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let, let, let's take. How, how about this? Uh, you, how about this? Too much advice. One. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Am I going to go first again? Um, okay. okay, I'll go first. Again. Uh, well, well, no, I'll, I'll go first because oh, I'll, okay. I'll show you the professionally correct response to, to this. <laughs> okay. Oh, Dad, you're giving me too much advice, and I don't want all this advice. Oh, great! I know just see what you need for that then. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, That's a good one. Uh, so uh, my my uh, act that that was just my Burns's silly <laughs> attempts at at humor. So sometimes I think we have to laugh when we're doing this kind of practice because it's hard and yeah we screw up. But I but I think I, I might say, uh, you know, son or what what whoever the, this person is, um, I just gonna have to plead. Guilty as accused right now. I fell into that stupid pattern of of giving you advice, and that must be really pissing you off, and and for good reason. And uh, uh, to, 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 uh, I, I'm gonna. I just turned off that stupid advice machine that I have. But I want to hear hear how you're feeling. I I love you a lot, and I'm clearly I've been letting you down and. I wouldn't be at all surprised if you're feeling pretty disappointed and, and ticked off at me. Can can you tell me tell me a little bit of, more about that? I what you're saying is so important, and I want to hear what you have to say. Mm. How was that? That was pretty good, but I 
I, I would give you an A minus for that because there wasn't quite enough stroking. Yeah. Okay. Great. Let's do a role reversal on it and uh, let let's add a little stroke. But uh, let me tell there. what I really liked about it. Oh, I liked, okay. Yeah. Thank I liked you. The, the disarming and that you immediately said I'm guilty as charged, and I'm going to turn off the nagging machine. And you identified, you know, I didn't write everything down that you said, um, but you identified you. feelings that I have, and I love you, um, and you, yeah. And then so want to hear what you have to I say. I want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, so it was a very opening. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, so. Um, that, yeah, I mean, there's a ton to like, so, so it was still an okay. A minus. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. Uh, you know, you, Dad, you're giving me too much advice. I don't want any uh, effing advice. And I didn't use a four-letter word. I just said effing. Good, good self-control there. <laughs> um, well, I'm, I'm taking a word from one of our podcast surveyors, so don't yeah. use those four-letter words. So I'm trying to be a little classier. Oh, good. Um, gosh, you know, you are so right. I'm giving you advice, and nobody wants advice. I, I don't even want advice when people try to give me advice, and I'm doing the thing that um, you've already told me you don't want advice, and I'm not listening to you, and... Um, I would totally understand it if you were really, really irritated and frustrated with me right now. I'm feeling frustrated with myself. And, you know, I just want you to know you are one of the most important people in the world to me. And our relationship is so important to me. And I want to um, hear what it's like for you, for me to just kind of step in and pretend you're not an adult and give you advice like you're a little kid. And, you know, tell me what you're feeling. i and, and what it's like for you to, to be on the receiving end of unwanted advice. Um, again, like I said, I'm feeling embarrassed and love you so much. Hopeful that we can keep working on this and, and, you know, you know, out of this develop an even stronger, closer relationship. Cause that's really what I want. Well, I thought that was also an A minus, um, uh, dang it uh well that's what i said <laughs> dang it <laughs> deeper uh, re relation your error was a slightly different one and it's one that jill often points out it's a simple one to correct but you didn't end up on inquiry i love you so much and hope we can develop a deeper relationship you know perhaps in january we could <laughs> you know <laughs> that t type of thing yeah it, it, it just it's just more psychobabble there and it's uh -oh. like it's like turning off the yeah. faucet uh -huh. and 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 instead so, you know i love you so much and 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 want us to develop a deeper relationship at this very moment and although it might be kind of hard to tell me more about all the times i've treated you like like a child or mm -hmm. given you advice and done things that pissed you off i really i i, I really respect you and uh i i, I want to he hear what you have to to say mm, i love that and I, that's just a slight uh, slight yeah. tune-up i mean who doesn't who could who would not respond positively to what you just said i respect you and want to hear what you have to say yeah. I mean, that's and I want like, to hear about the negative feelings. I want to hear about the times that you're pissed off at me. I want to hear about the times when I screw up. I know there's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And I feel lucky to have a son like you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've got some advice for you, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't we summarize for our listeners uh, what what this has been about? Um, like the, what, the, what, see, it's, it's not mimicking David. It's not mimicking Rhonda. It's learning how to learn. And this mm -hmm. is something I call the intimacy exercise. And, and you focus on just one thing that somebody said to you that you didn't handle well, and we'll teach you other techniques in future podcasts, but the, 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 the simple learning, if you want to get good at it, is first of all, you got to have that five secrets list in front of you. It's the disarming technique, thought and feeling empathy and inquiry. Those are the three listening skills. That's it's EAR, empathy, assertiveness and respect. Those are the three empathy skills. And then the assertiveness skill is I feel statements and then. Uh, the respect is is stroking, say, saying something warm and loving, even in in the heat of battle. 
and and those are the elements you 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 want to share w- with the other person but the way you learn is the other person hits you and then you respond and then they give you a letter grade and tell you here's what worked and here's what didn't work and then mm-hmm. you do role reversals and keep doing role reversals back and forth until you you get up to an A or an A minus or maybe even an an A plus. Yeah, and the way you give feedback is really important. Like I screwed up in how I gave you feedback, and what we want usually the team model of giving feedback is you say what you liked about what the other person did first, and mm-hmm. then you say how what you think they could have done to improve. And like when yeah. I gave you feedback, I was like, mm, you didn't do enough stroking. Yeah. And I did the negative first, and that was the opposite of what I sh- uh, was what, what would be helpful. You were probably still pissed off at me for giving you low, a low grade or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Family in a way. No. But it's anyway, just, the, this is our our, our attempt habit. to uh, uh, you know show teach you a little bit more about how to learn the five secrets, whether you're a therapist or whether you're a member. Of, of the general public. And, and then, of course, there's two other things you can do if you're a therapist and, and want, want to improve. And, and one of my latest techniques is called what, what's my grade. Mm-hmm. And during a therapy session, we've actually begun to use this in our uh, feeling good app development team, to tell you mm-hmm. the truth. Uh, in fact, that, that's a business application. And, and I'll tell you how we used it just the other day. Um, we, we were having a talk and 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 things started getting a little edgy so i stopped there were about three or four of us and 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 said let you know what what's how would you grade what we're doing right now you know and then uh people started giving it like a, a you know a d minus and stuff like that wow and I said, that's kind of how I was feeling too. Why, why don't t- 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 tell us how you're feeling, what's going on? And then everyone kind of opened up and supported each other. And it was really kind of a magical thing. I know. It sounds awesome. Yeah. And then I said, what, what's our grade now? And everybody said, oh, we're at an A plus now. And it seemed like we became a team in, mm-hmm. in, a, in a deeper way. And we hadn't, there'd been a lot of things swept under the rug before that. And I think I just had a wonderful interaction with someone and they were thinking it was an F and I had no idea. Wow. And uh, it's the same, uh, you know, if you're a therapist, you can do it in a therapy session. You you can say to the patient, by the way, how how can you give me a grade right now on empathy? Tell me how, how you're doing, how we're doing right now. What, what do you like? What do you dislike? And surprisingly, patients will grade you uh, right right away. And a lot of therapists say, oh, they won't be honest with me. And that, that's just your defense because you don't want to hear what you have to say. That, To my way of thinking, patients and, and colleagues as well are incredibly honest. Yeah. And uh, the real thing is, do you have the courage to find out? Because if you do, you can almost always turn it in a, in a positive direction. And often your worst failures as a therapist become your your greatest breakthroughs or your greatest uh, failures with a colleague, like the woman who got so hurt and pissed off at me. And and I made a fool of myself in front of the whole Tuesday group because I was so, so crabby and yet sticking with it and being non-defensive about it and saying, gosh, what's going on here? It led to, you know, magic, you know, warmth, Mm -hmm. fantastic breakthrough and that's my whole philosophy uh, about this is that uh, uh, you will now summarize my whole philosophy because I can't remember (laughs) what I was going to (laughs) say I mean I think your whole you know like I don't know if this is your whole philosophy but you know practicing failing you know getting feedback learning from your mistakes practicing again improving um, that's the only way you get good at the five secrets I mean this has been incredibly helpful for me and great um the other well, yeah so you know getting a five secrets buddy or a partner you know you practice they practice you practice they practice that's the only way to learn yeah we call it the philosophy of joyous failure yes exactly and uh, be, being happy to fail because each time you fail you're learning something yeah and you're and, giving yourself the opportunity for growth and development yeah. you know i'm psychical babbling but you are you know like you can move forward you know people don't learn when they're happy they don't change when they're, yeah, you know, things are going smoothly. 
Yeah, right? that's right. Okay. okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Rhonda, and <laughs> thank welcome you. back. It's just so great to, after your four weeks or five weeks, or whatever it is, tour, touring the world and turning people on to Team CBT and doing all kinds of cool things. It's just great to have you back home yeah. again. It's great to be back. Thank Not you. Bad. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast. For more information, visit Dr. Burns' website at feelinggood.com, where you will find the show notes under the podcast page. You will also find archives of previous episodes and many resources for therapists and non-therapists. We welcome your comments and questions. If you want to support the show, please share the podcast with people who might benefit from it. You could also go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski, the director of the Feeling Great Therapy Center. We hope you enjoyed this episode. I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast.